Come on, let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. I just want you to look at three people and tell them how much you love them. On your way to your seat, tell three people you love them. You can't love God without loving one another. Oh, how we love you. How we pray. Come on, everybody that loves Jesus, let me see you wave your hand. This is called a wave offering. This is how you get the world's attention to let them know whose side you're on. Everybody lift it up. Oh, how we worship. Oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Come on, I can't sing it. You sing it. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship you. Who you talking about? Come on, everybody. Come on, I can't hear you. Oh, how we pray. And oh, how we worship. Oh, Lord. Come on, this the last time. Open your mouth. Oh, how we love you. Come on, take me up what? Oh. Come on, raise the roof in this place. Oh, how we pray. Oh, how we worship you. Oh, Lord. Come on, one last time. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we praise you. Oh, how we worship you. Come on, give him another wave offering right here. <laughs> See, when you worship, worship is the correction of focus. That's why every time you come into this place, your mindset has to change. Because there's some stuff that happened to you last week that you don't want nobody else to know you're struggling with. And maybe your mind wasn't right like it needed to be. So when you worship him, it causes you to take your mind off your problem and place your mind on your problem solver. So when you give God a wave offering, you telling Jesus hello, but you telling your problems goodbye. So whatever you've been going through that you don't like, you ought to wave at it and tell it goodbye problems. Hello, Jesus. This is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad. Oh, Lord. Come on, tell him you love him. Tell him you'll praise him. Give him your worship. Who you going to give the praise to? This is it. Oh, how we love you. And oh, how we pray. Oh, how we worship. Listen, we got to go to Luke chapter 23. Got to go to Luke chapter 23. Young folks, you know what time it is. All of our children, you know what time it is. But for those of us who will remain in the sanctuary, we're going to Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. 
If you don't have your Bible with you, it's cool in the gang. It's right there on the screen. It says that one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, saying that thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, we deserve what we're getting. We receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man is not like us. He has done nothing amiss. He's done nothing wrong. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And I love Jesus in verse 43. The old preacher would say he stopped dying long enough. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. I want to minister for just a few moments from this thought. I want to talk about remembered. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I want the Lord to remember me. As we tiptoe into the corridors of today's text, we jaywalk into this passage. We literally cut across the field. There are 38 other verses that have preceded where we are in verse number 39. And the reason that we have to begin in verse number 39, because a conversation begins to take place at the most important place in Christendom, and that is the place called Calvary. Whatever you do, don't ever forget Calvary. I don't care how new age or how fly your church is or how much we seek to cater to the needs of all people, young, old, and whether you are from the ba baby boomer generation or whether you're a millennial, it doesn't matter. No matter how cool or how fly you are, we should never forget Calvary. The old folk used to sing the song that boldly declares, I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous, by the way, that grace that caught my fallen soul, it looked beyond my faults and saw my need. Don't never forget Calvary. Calvary is the place that I will never forget because it was at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. And it was there by faith that I received my sight. And now I don't care what you do to me, I'll be happy all the day. It was at Calvary where the ultimate sacrifice was made. It is at Calvary where we finally see God for us. Creation is God behind us. Bethlehem is God with us. But Calvary is God for us. It's one thing for God to be behind us, and it's one thing for God to be with us, but it's a beautiful thing to know that our God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? That's what Calvary teaches us. Don't you ever forget about Calvary. I don't care how cool you are. I don't care how much swag you have. If you miss sight of Calvary, you'll never understand why we get up and drive as far as we have to drive and get up as early as we have to get up to lift our hands and our voices to the one who hung, bled, and died for us. How dare we ever overlook the sacrifice that Jesus has made for us, for Jesus did, by the way, paid it all, all to him I owe. For sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it whiter than snow. Some of y'all looking at me like you don't know that kind of stuff, but if you don't know those terms, you're missing God in a real deep and personal way. It is this place called Calvary where the ultimate sacrifice was made. That is why we preach, because Jesus died on that cross, but early third day morning he arose with all power in his hand if he didn't die for me he couldn't rise for me I have to appreciate Calvary I must appreciate Calvary it's a, it's an order that I appreciate Calvary because it is at Calvary where I finally got to see where I was supposed to be don't get it twisted I know you saved and sanctified today but it should have been you on that cross paying for your own sins but the old folk taught us that Jesus paid a price that he did not owe because we owed a price that we could not pay. Don't you ever forget about Calvary. Look at your neighbor and tell him, please don't forget Calvary. You can forget Mountain Dew, but don't you dare forget Mount Calvary. 
Because there's something that happened at Calvary that Mountain Dew can't take you there. There, It it is this place called Calvary, the hill of the skull, that Golgotha's hill where Jesus hung, bled, and died right there on that cross, uh, experiencing all the pain, the torture, the humiliation that he did not deserve to receive, but because he loved us, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would simply believe in him, they should not perish but have everlasting life. Luke chapter 23 shows us this place called Calvary, but it does something deeper than that. Not only does it show us the place called Calvary, but it gives us a conversation that took place on this hill called Calvary. The conversation is probably one of the most profound conversations to ever take place in the history of the scriptures. For the Bible tells us in verse number 39, so we can go ahead and get to the text, that one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him. That's the first point that I want to point out to you that happens at the cross. There is a railing on the cross. There is a railing on the cross, which literally means this term railed in Greek suggests that this criminal, this thief who would die next to Jesus actually had the unmitigated gall to actually ridicule Jesus while he himself is on the cross. This has always backed me up in a corner because the text says that he he railed on him. The railing uh, of Jesus literally means, if I can just bring it up to our speed, it was the idea of this man who, uh, as they would say back in the 70s, he was playing the dozens. In the 90s, we start calling it cracking on folks. That's what he did. He, he's in the same boat that Jesus is on yet, and still he's cracking on Jesus. He's making jokes about Jesus. He's not only a criminal, but he's also crazy. For how dare you be in the same predicament as somebody else, and here you are, the kettle calling the pot black. And here you are in the same judgment, the same shape, the same condemnation, but he begins to talk about him. He tries his best to offend Jesus, especially when he throws out his potential possible position that Jesus holds. Watch what he says, if thou be the Christ, save yourself. And after you finish saving yourself, turn around and save us too. I don't know how you feel about it, and you need to be glad that I'm not Jesus. I'm so glad that you ain't Jesus, because if you were Jesus, and if I were Jesus, how many know I would have got up off that cross, I would have saved myself, but I would have left him hanging. How dare you expect to receive help from somebody that you just dogged out a few minutes ago? Can I get a witness from three people in here? You looking all saved and sanctimonious, but there are some people you don't mind helping. But there's a few people in your life that think that they are entitled to every blessing that you have. And you look at them like, baby, you didn't work as hard as I had to work to get to where I am right now. You didn't help me. You didn't help me pluck the wheat. You didn't help me grind it. You didn't help me cook it. Now that it's time for me to eat, you want to sit at my table? The day devil is a liar. I'm going to eat this. I'm going to enjoy it because I'm the one that paid for it. I struggled for it. I cried for it. I had to bring up the real for it. I barely made it by the hair of my chin and chin chin and you think that you're going to come up in my circle, in my environment, in my atmosphere and eat up everything that God has given to me. Once again, the devil is a lie and so are you. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm glad you ain't Jesus. No, because had you been Jesus, you might not have liked me. You might not have woke me up this morning. No wonder the songwriter said, I'm glad that man didn't make me because he might not even let it rain on the grass that I have to walk on every now and then. I'm glad that man didn't do this. And so he rails on Jesus. He picks at Jesus and says, if you are really who you say you are, watch this, prove it to me. Can I tell you the reason that so many people are mad with God right now is because he won't prove to them that he is God. He won't show them anything. But can I tell you what Jesus said about people like that church folk, by the way? He says only a perverse generation would seek signs and wonders. So you got to be careful of people that's always talking about show me something because only faithless people are the ones that you always have to show them something. Show me how this going to work. Show me what it's going to look like. Prove to me that this going to be good. Then I'll jump on board with you. Get out of my life if that's your mentality. Jesus said we're going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. He looked at Thomas and said, 
blessed are they that have not seen and yet they believe in me. So he says, if you're really who you say that you are, I need you to prove yourself by saving yourself. Please don't leave you out. But whatever you do, please don't leave me out. Once you save you, I want you to turn around and get me too. My only problem with that is, do you deserve to be brought off of this cross? Because if the truth be told, you indeed deserve what it is that we're going through. And I'm just going to say this real quick because I know you're not going to want to hear this and I'm not going to stay on this point long. But some of us are being crucified because we deserve it. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. We're going through some stuff right now because we deserve it. Ain't nobody give you your reputation. You earned your reputation. You know, you, the devil ain't making you go through what you're going through. As a matter of fact, I remember when we used to play basketball with some of our friends and we would pick teams. And, and I wasn't the, the best basketball player, but you better not leave me behind that three-point line by myself. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm dangerous. I don't drive in. I ain't big and strong like that. Be driving in, knocking people out the way. I ain't like LeBron James, the freight train, that when you see him coming, you just get out of the way. Just go on, dunk the ball, Mr. James. Have your way. I wasn't that kind of dude, but if you left me out there by myself, behind that three-point line, you can consider it done. Steph Curry ain't got nothing on me. I'm telling you, behind that three-point line, you can go and tell him, I say, I approve this message, all right? I'll play him any day of the week, all right? And so, but we would have one of our friends out there that he wasn't really that good. He was tall, but he really wasn't that good. He couldn't shoot well. He didn't dribble well. He was just tall. And so, every time he would get the ball, uh, I would notice that the people on the other team would not even get close to him. They, they wouldn't even get by him. They would double somebody but they would leave him all by himself. The reason that they would leave him all by himself, I wonder why nobody ever checked him. They said, don't worry about him because he's self-check. He's self-check. He going to mess himself up. He, when he shoot the ball, he going to throw a brick. If he try to go in there, dribble the ball too long, he going to travel. So we don't even worry about him. What if I told you that the reason some people, the devil ain't bothering them is because they self-check. They mess themselves up. You know, they do crazy stuff on their own. And it ain't the devil who made me do it. Listen at the last three words. Me do it. You understand what I'm saying? At the end of the day, some of us are being crucified because we deserve to be crucified. What if I told you that you broke because of you. It, it ain't that you don't make enough money. You just spend too much money that you ain't got. It ain't nobody else's fault. Your, your relationship ain't on the rocks because it's the devil. It's you. you. You don't know how to talk to people. You don't know how to converse. You, you don't know how to deal with no real situations. It's, it's you. Maybe you just pick wrong. That's all it is, you know. I mean, you maybe you attract dogs because you're smelling like dog food. I don't know. But it's somewhere along the line. Y'all don't get quiet on me like that. Look at your name and tell them some stuff is your fault. It's, 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 it's your fault right there, you know. You, it's your fault, you know. You just do some stuff that you bring on yourself. But don't feel bad about it. All of us do some stuff that we bring on ourselves, which makes God ask the question, if I save myself, what is it about you that would make me save you as well? When maybe, just maybe, you deserve to be bearing the cross that you are. After all, the same Jesus that you are expecting to help you is the same Jesus that you are literally throwing under the bus by saying to him if you really are who you say you are then save me well maybe if you tell Jesus since you are who you say you are then go ahead and save me you see I don't know how you feel about it and y'all might have to pray for your pastor but I'm sick and tired of fake filthy and phony people I need somebody that's gonna roll with me unconditionally either you gonna roll with me or you ain't gonna roll with me if you're my friend be my friend if I like you I like you if I don't don't like you, it ain't gonna be no misunderstanding. I'm gonna let you know. I don't like you, maybe I ain't got much of a reason right now, but it's something I just don't like about the situation. But if you're gonna roll with me, roll with me. Don't come put the ifs in my category. The question is not if I am the son of God. The question is, can you believe? Because if you can believe, then all things are possible to them that believe. He literally rails on Jesus. This backs me up in a corner. The fact that he rails on Jesus and he himself is also on the cross. Can I tell y'all a secret about some people in your life that you really need to be careful for? Watch out for them before the end of 2018. If you're going to manifest some peace, some joy, and some happiness in your life. Here's something you have to understand. You must understand this. Hear your boy when I tell you this, that there are some people who see your success 
and they see the possibility and the potential of your success. So in order to make themselves feel good, they have to demonize your success. They want to make you feel good about the fact that you finally made it. They, they, they want to not only demonize your success, but some people will go as far as to minimize your success. You know, they'll tell you, you, you good, but you ain't all that, you know. Well, how was it? You know, it was straight. You know, you know it was better than straight, but, but in order to feel good about the fact that you still crooked, you would just say somebody straight rather than it was awesome. It, it was amazing. I, I had a great time. It, it was all right. It was all right. You know, the only reason it was all right is because you want to demonize and minimize what somebody else has going on in their life because you've not yet reached that level in your life, which is why he says, if you're supposed to be Jesus, then why don't you save yourself and then turn around and do something else for us? You have to be careful, hear me, child of God. You have to be careful of who you call yourself kicking to the curb in this season of your life because you never know, like grandmama said, whose door you might have to knock on and ask them for a loaf of bread. You, you got to remember the bridges that could bring you over because you might need the same bridge to carry you back across again. Be careful who you step on on your way up the ladder because those are the same people that you'll meet as you're on your way down from that ladder. This brother was not only criminal, but he was crazy. To point the finger at Jesus and say that if you are who you say you are, then you should prove it. To me, can I tell y'all something? Because some of y'all messed up last four years of your life because you've been too busy playing truth or dare. Some folk, man, in here, they better not dare you. Your crazy self will do anything if somebody dare you. You will do anything if somebody dare. Let me tell you what a wise person would do. They would know this, that everything you could do don't mean you should do. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Jesus could have come down. Let me go old school. It wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. It, it was his love that kept him there just for the record. It, it wasn't the spikes that they drove in his feet that held him to the cross. Jesus told his disciples, I could call for 12 legions of angels and they would come and save me right now. But how then could the scriptures be fulfilled? The only reason Jesus stayed on the cross is because he came to die. And all I'm saying to you is you need to stop aborting your assignment just to prove to other people that you got some strength that they can't seem to find. <laughs> Railed on him and said, if you are really are who you say that you are, then save yourself, save us. But he said that only after he mocked Jesus, cracked on Jesus, played the dozens on Jesus, gave Jesus some your mama jokes. That's what he was doing. You remember them your mama jokes they used to tell, you know, back in the day, mama? So stupid, she bought a glass door with a peephole, that kind of stuff. You know, tried to kill a bird by throwing it off a cliff. You know, that kind of stuff. Y'all remember that? Thought hamburger helper came with an extra person, that kind of stuff. This is what he is doing with Jesus. And watch this. Watch your Jesus. Watch your God. He's so smooth. He's so cool, so calm, so collected. Got so much swag, so much poise. I like Jesus because here's what he taught us. That even though the brother was talking about him, Jesus didn't talk back about him. I wonder who I wonder who can dog you out and you keep your mouth shut. Because I believe that what God is getting ready to do in this season of many of our lives, he's going to let our actions speak louder than our words. That's why some of y'all, you got some people talking about you right now. But God sent me here to tell you to hold your peace. Let him fight your battles because sooner or later, God just going to let you show up. And the same folk that were talking down to you going to have to speak up to you. He never said a mumbling word to save me. He never opened his mouth. Can I tell you that what God is looking for from you? Before I go to point number two and turn the page, maybe what God is looking for you, from you, is your ability to go through and not let everybody know that you're going through. 
Maybe, what if I told you that God won't take you to the next level until you finally get to the place where you let him do the talking for you? Maybe you keep losing battles because you keep fighting battles that you weren't supposed to fight. He never opened his mouth. He said nothing to this brother, which leads me to say this last thing before I turn the, turn the page, turn the corner here. People have every right. Here it is. You ain't going to like it. You ain't going to like the first part, but you're going to love the second part. People have every right to say whatever they want to say about you. Freedom of speech. They can say whatever they want to say about you. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent. They have the right to say whatever they want to say about you. Here's the good news. You have every right to ignore them. Come on, talk to me when you get to church. When folk don't know what they talking about, all you have to do is eventually let God prove to them. Because there's some folk right now you know in your life, they looked at you a long time ago. And they were like, when I first met you, I ain't even like you that much. But now that I done got to know you, you all right with me. I, I, I should have never felt that way about you. You looking at them like, well, you still don't know me for real, for real. But, you know, I mean, I, I wasn't waiting on you to validate whether or not I was all right. I knew I was all right the whole time. You didn't know that I was all right. He, he never opened his mouth while this brother railed on him disrespectfully. Respectful, blasphemous to dog out somebody that's in the same shape that you are in. Sweep around your own front door. Before you try to sweep around somebody else's front door. But before you call somebody else a liar, go back over your record book. You done told some lies, white lies, black lies, red lies, lies of commission and lies of omission. If you didn't tell the truth, you still told a lie. Yeah. <laughs> Calling somebody else a thief. How many towers you done took from a hotel? How much money you done found on the ground and you picked it up? That wasn't yours and it wasn't a blessing from the Lord neither. You didn't got pick some of y'all using stolen pens right now. Pens, paper, notebooks, paper clips, all of that from your job. That's not yours. Now they gotta add that to the budget because somebody done stole everything up in there. All up in Chuck E. Cheese with your children. Some other kid left their tickets in the machine. You went by and snatched five of them. So here you go. Them won your tickets. Your baby didn't win that game. Yo, thief. And you got the nerve to talk about somebody else. That word is called pride. The only reason you'll talk about somebody else is because you feel like you better than them. I love every one of y'all in here, but you ain't no better than nobody else. We ain't no better than nobody else. Our church ain't no better than nobody else, church. Your pastor ain't no better than nobody else's pastor. If it weren't for the blood of Jesus, all of us would be falling right now. Real on him. He's in the same shape, which is why the second thief has to step up. Now we see, we move from the railing on the cross to the respect at the cross. It's on the screen if you're taking note. The respect at the cross. Watch what he says. He said, bruh. He said this to his partner in crime. Bruh. What's wrong with you? Have you lost your mind? We stone and got caught. We deserve what we get. And you are dogging out this brother that you ain't never met. You just heard about him through the grapevine. And you have the unmitigated gall, the audacity to actually dog out this man. I have a question for you. Although we stole together, don't you fear God? Hold up, check it. This somebody who is a convicted felon, stole from people, getting the death penalty, committed fraud, wrote bad 
checks. Now he's getting ready to be killed. Stole other people's stuff. Getting to be killed. And watch the nerve of him to say, don't you fear God? My question is, were you fearing God when you stole? Watch this. Don't read too deep into what I just said because just because you made a mistake doesn't mean you are a mistake. I should have had some better responses than that. Just because you made a mistake does not mean that you are a mistake. You see, the world wants you to think that you are what you did. But can you look at your neighbor with some bold eyes and tell them, I'm not what I did. Yeah, I made a mistake, but I am not a mistake. I, I committed a sin, but I am not sin. I, I, I messed up along the way, but I am not, I am not the epitome of messed upness. He said, yes, I'm a criminal, but I ain't crazy. I'm a criminal because I stole, but it don't change the fact that there's a God somewhere. Uh-huh. You see, I'm looking at some people in here. You know you don't do everything right, but you still got some boundaries about you. Who am I preaching to in this room that ain't ashamed to be honest? I don't do everything right, but I still got some boundaries about me. I, 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 yes, I did that, but baby, I don't do that. Some of y'all messed up all last week, but you still in church. You committed some sin the past two or three days that you don't want nobody else to know about. But you still in church today because although I was foolish and I did some stuff that I shouldn't have done, it don't change the fact that I still know where my help comes from. I still know who's keeping me. I know who's keeping me in the midst of myself. I know who's keeping me even while I'm driving down the street mad and cussing people out. I still know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have been swallowed up a long time ago. So that's my question that I got to ask you. Don't you fear God? Don't you fear God? I, I wish, I wish if I had the platform, I, I, would, just, I would just have to ask all of America. I preach it on the grass at the White House and I would ask one question. Don't we fear God? Spiritual moral decadence runs in our country like it ain't nothing. It was the late Billy Graham that said that if God does not judge America, he'll have to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize for destroying them. Don't we fear God? That's my question. Don't you fear God? Like I've heard people make excuses about God and church, and I'm like covering my ears. I would not let God hear me say that. That's too early to go to church. You've been at work at 8 o'clock all week long, but 8 o'clock too early for church. Really? Don't you fear? I wouldn't even let God hear me say that. That's too late to have church. Really? Some, a, a time is too late to go to church and give God prayer. Don't you? I wouldn't even let God hear me say, that's too late. Don't they know folks got to get up and go to work tomorrow? Don't you know that if God don't bless you, you're going to lose your little spanky job? He going to give you all the time you need. I would not let God hear me say certain stuff. Don't you fear God. What's more important to you than your God relationship? Your family don't come before God. Jesus taught us that. Jesus was teaching. He was preaching. They stopped and pulled him to the side. Said, Jesus, hey, your mama here, your brothers and sisters here. Jesus turned and said, who is my mother? Who are my sisters and brothers? He said, my mothers, my fathers, my sisters and brothers are those that do the will of the Father. If they don't do the will of the Father, they ain't no kin to me. That's what he said. That, that, that's what he said. Don't you fear God. Are you crazy enough to dog out Jesus 
for real when you don't even understand that he ain't on this cross because he got to be. He on this cross because he chose to be. You better be careful who you point at when they're going through because you don't even understand. Some people are struggling by choice. They are sacrificing by choice. They, they, they are going through this season right now by choice. It ain't that they can't afford a car. They're just saving up for a better one. It's not that they can't get a house. I'm just waiting till I get one that I really want. D don't get it twisted when you see what I'm going. It's a lot of people singing, why you ain't married yet? Hey, it ain't that I'm married because I can't be. I just ain't found the right one yet. You see how fine I am? I can get anybody I want. It ain't about me. Don't you fear God? When I hear about folks walking up on people's properties, shooting in their bedrooms, killing 16-year-old boys, don't you fear God? When folk walk up in schools shooting innocent people that they ain't mad at, missing the people that they really are upset with and don't have no kind of remorse for, it makes me wonder, do you even fear God? When people will do any and everything just as long as it makes them happy, notwithstanding that everything that makes you happy don't make God happy, don't we fear God? The fact that our children really ain't got nothing to watch on TV nowadays because everything they watch is filled with scandalous, crazy foolery. Don't we fear God? No, nope. long as we can make a buck. Don't we fear God? When everything comes before him, jobs, people trying to impress him, they don't even like us. But we put them first. Don't we fear God? We will spend thousands of dollars on Christmas and not once tell Jesus happy birthday. Don't you fear God? Trust to get mad when somebody don't get you on something on the day that we celebrate him. Don't we fear God? the respect coming from a brother who is dying who said I deserve this he don't deserve this he's not the kind of person if I go down everybody going down with me everybody don't deserve to go down with you he respects him and says that this man has done nothing amiss or wrong but we deserve everything that we're getting so he moves from the respect of Jesus to finally he makes a request from the cross. He says, listen, Jesus, this might not be the proper time to have a conversation with you. Because I know when I'm going through, I don't like to communicate. I'm too busy trying to concentrate. Trying to figure out what to do next. When I'm going through, I don't like to talk to people. I like to talk to Jesus. Folk can give you advice, but only God can give you answers. I'm preaching better than y'all say amen. You can talk to 20 people, and 20 people are going to tell you 20 different things. My Bible says, according to the book of Romans, let God be true and every man a liar. People can give you advice, but only God can give you answers. Oh, man can write you a check, but only God can write your name in heaven. So I'm going to him. I don't have time to communicate. It's time to concentrate. He says, this might not be the right time to talk, but I need to ask you this. If you don't mind, when you come into your kingdom, just remember me. That's all I'm asking you to do. Remember me. You ain't got to throw me no party. You ain't got to come looking for me. You ain't got to tell nobody you met me. As a matter of fact, you ain't even got to put my story in the Bible. I just need you to remember me. You can tell the people that's really going through whose back is really up against the wall versus those who think they're going through because folk that's really struggling, they don't care nothing about attention. They don't care nothing about their name being on no program. They don't care nothing about no reserved seats. They just say, Lord, remember me. 
Ain't nobody got to know you know my name. Ain't nobody got to know we ever had a conversation. As a matter of fact, just bless me under the table. You, you ain't got to let nobody else know that we close. Ain't nobody got to know that we tight. I pray before 2018 is over with that God will put you in the presence of some people that ain't got to be all up on you so that they can get some recognition themselves. But I pray that God will give you some secret people who love you unconditionally and say, listen, I'm here to support you. Ain't nobody got to know that I blessed you. Ain't nobody got to know that we tight. Don't nobody have to know that we friends. Just do me one favor. Keep me on your mind. You see, everybody that think they deserve something, I want you to throw me a party. I want it to be at this time. I want everybody to wear this color. That's because you think you deserve something. But for the 12 of us in here that know we really don't deserve nothing from God, we don't even be asking God for a whole lot of stuff. Some of y'all got 27 things on your things for God to do list. But when you're a brother like me that realize you don't deserve nothing from God, I ask him for one thing, mercy. Mercy. I ain't going to ask you to pay my bills. Just give me mercy to make it even if you don't pay my bills. God, God, give me a little peace. If you don't change my situation, help me feel good while I'm riding through the storm. Just, can I get a witness from 10 people in here? God, I don't need everything. If you can just give me one thing to help me make my grace is sufficient for you. You ought to high five your neighbor and tell them all you need is grace. You don't need no party. You don't need no crowd. Through many dangers, toils and snares, I've already come. Shake somebody's hand around you and say grace. Brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me on grace woke me up this morning grace started me on my way is there anybody here can be like a thief on the cross and say Lord when you come into your kingdom do me a favor, just remember me, ah, please, remember me, do Lord, do Lord, Lord, remember me when I'm sick and I can't get well, Lord, Remember me when my burdens are wearing me down. Lord, remember me when I'm sick in my body. Remember me when my children are crazy. Remember me when they lose my job. Remember me when my head is hurting. Remember me when my car break down. Remember me when friends are few. Remember me when they talk about me. Call me everything but a child of God. Ah, please remember me. I'm through when I tell him. He said, do Lord, remember me. But look at verse 43. Watch what your Jesus said. He said, today you shall be with me in paradise. I'm getting tired, but I got to give you this. He said, today, look at your neighbor and say, today you shall be with me in paradise now the man never asked Jesus to let him come to heaven he didn't say Jesus let me in your kingdom he said Jesus when you get to heaven remember me if you leave me in hell remember me 
if you leave me in trouble, remember me. But Jesus said, no, nah, I'm going to do you one better. When I get to heaven, I'm going to let you in too. If you crazy enough to praise me on the cross, I'm crazy enough to let you in the gate. Somebody here, if you can praise him while you're going through, then God will see you. Is there anybody in here? Don't wait till the battle is over. Go on. Praise him now. He may not come. When you want him to come, ah, he's always. He's always on time. He's always on time. He won't just remember you, but he'll receive you. Shake somebody's hand. I got to run over to Hoover right quick, but shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off and say, neighbor, this week coming up, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to pray for you, but let me tell you, what I'm going to ask God to do for you. I'm going to pray three words. Lord, remember her. Lord, remember him. And his remembrance will give you everything you need. My grandmama said every time he shows up, he's going to show out. If you hold your peace, wait on the Lord, he will, ah, oh, he will, yeah, he will. Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for always coming to visit us. We thank the Lord for the word. We can't praise him enough for all he's done for us.